What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. And today I want to do a real quick video on the Eureka Palm, which is actually one of my favorite palm trees. Okay, and so to start here, Eureka Palm is kind of a broad name, but that's typically what this particular plant is called, and that is the Dipsis lutescens, or Dipsis lutescens, uh, Golden Cane Palm, Butterfly Palm, etc. It's a plant of many names. These are a medium-sized clustering palm, clustering meaning they have many trunks and they all develop from the same tissue. It's not multiple plants put in one pot where there's multiple root systems entangled together, but they've actually divided at the base and sometimes along the trunk, and you have a cluster of them. The number of canes varies, can be just a few to I think up to 50 in the very, very, very tropical areas. Another thing that's highly variable with this palm is the height. I Literature all over the place varies saying 12 to 25 feet, 15 to 30 feet. There are specimens reported up to 40 feet. But in their native habitat in Madagascar, uh, it looks like anywhere from 25 to 35 feet is a little bit more average. And there in Aunt Madagascar, you find them growing along riverbeds and streams and along the mountain slopes in the very moist, warm rainforest. These are a smooth trunked palm with a crown shaft. Crown shaft being basically modified leaf bases that wrap around the trunk, and it's where your new growth emerges from. It's this is the self-cleaning palm. So these, you can see them yellowing. They slowly die off and fall off the palm. Back here, I can see one that I need to pull right now, but it's just slightly out of reach. Diameter of the trunks varies as well, as well as the spacing between the scars, with the rings you see on the trunk. All gonna depend on light and humidity, and this is a very, very, very variable palm. It's a word that I've said often and probably will continue to with this plant. So on that note of variability, another thing that varies a lot is the color of the crown shaft, the trunk, and the stems of the leaves. Because, well, different growing conditions seem to manipulate different results. You can grow these guys in full sun as long as you live in a warm, humid environment. In the desert, that probably wouldn't go great going to be better for you in a filtered position if you live someplace that's very, very arid. But they love nice, moist, well-draining soil. So if you have sandy soil, Floridians, I'm talking to y'all, these are fantastic. They make a great privacy hedge. They're replacing the ficuses. Many years ago, people were planting ficus as privacy hedges. The Eureka palms are kind of taking that position. Warm, humid conditions bright sun is fine, indirect sun is also okay, but these are things that are going to create the variations within the characteristics of your plant. One of the things I like so much about the Eureka Palm is that it can maintain these uh, green canes, which sometimes will turn yellow, which I prefer, but they're not getting uh, the right lighting this time of year in my indoor growth space to really see that vivid coloring. But the crown shafts can turn yellow right now. Mine are white. You'll see white and silvery. Sometimes they'll stay green or yellow. With the warmer conditions, humid conditions, nice sandy soil, if these dry out just a smidge more, they're slightly on the drier side, you're going to see a little bit more yellow. Also, if they're in full sun, bright, bright, bright light, you will probably potentially lose that smooth, colorful trunk, and it'll start to get replaced with a bark trunk, which is still really pretty. These guys are heavy feeders, but they do not like to have wet feet, so frequent waterings, maybe in smaller amounts, might be more appropriate if you don't have really well-draining soil, or amend that soil would probably be more ideal. Water and soil more on the acidic side is going to work better for you. Alkaline soils tend to inhibit plants from absorbing a lot of the beneficial metals that they need, magnesium, iron, etc. So these will benefit from slow-release fertilizers as well as liquid fertilizers. But it's best to use one made for palms so that they get those micros that they need, potassium, magnesium, iron, so forth. Manganese is really important there. All right, but what about indoors? These are being sold more and more and more common in nurseries as house plants. Should they be? I don't really know if I would say they should. They're not always the best house plants because they like a lot of humidity and airflow. If they don't get that air circulation, 
then they can get droopy leaves. The soil that they're growing in also is going to probably stay wet a little bit longer without that air circulation. And they really like the heat and wet air. So those aren't really typically conditions you find indoors. I have mine out in my grow space and they've always done fairly well. I thin them out when I bring them in mostly because I need airflow through to the side where I keep all of my orchids over here. And uh, I don't really need 50 trunks <laughs> growing out of each pot. So I'm kind of narrowing down the little trunks and over time it's just going to have larger trunks. So indoors, bright indirect light. Really, really intense light, probably not gonna be great for them since they don't have the humidity and the warmth, you may end up scorching the leaves. You can note overwatering by yellowing leaves, typically starting from the base, from the crown shaft and working its way up. On the flip side of that, it's also easy to underwater these plants. So see here, these brown tips all the way up there. That's probably from the dry spell that these guys just had to go through because temperatures got too cold in here and. The long story, if you, don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about. They're okay, though. One of the things that is really nice with the Eureka Palms is that brown tips are not the end of the world. It's really easy to just take your scissors, take your nice, clean, sterile scissors, and just cut them right off. And it actually looks better than it does on most palm trees when you do that. Oh, and as far as pests are concerned, I've never had an issue with spider mites on these guys, but I do miss them. I keep their leaves fairly moist, but not too much into the crowns because that can lead to rot. But the mealybugs seem to love them. But I have, uh, the mealybugs are just, they rule my life right now. So they may not be a typical problem. It might just be because they're in the space where there's other plants with mealybugs on them. Another reason, maybe not a great house plant, these get really big. There are some articles online that suggest that indoors they rarely get more than six to ten feet. I've never, that's never been my experience. Usually when I see these grown indoors by somebody who has that green thumb or just has a really hot, humid house, you know, we all know those people who don't really use their air conditioners, right? And yeah, the, the plants grow, they, they keep on growing. So I'm, I'm not sure about that. Now, how often you water these indoors is really going to depend on your environment, but generally as a rule of thumb, I like to let mine dry out for no more than a couple days at the max before watering them again. And mine are in really tall pots, so I use a stick. I poke it all the way down and pull it back up. If the stick is the same color all the way through, it's dry. The main thing is to not let these have wet feet. They will rot and they will die. Same thing if you decide that your clump is too thick. You wanna go ahead and thin those other trunks out so say if I were to do this right now, I could go in and cut out these smaller trunks right here. But if I were to do that, I would want to make sure I leave at least a few inches above the soil because if you cut them below the soil, they could potentially rot. And since these do share a system, that can affect the entire plant. Because sometimes these get so full that you can't see the beauty of the trunk. So a lot of the times people do want to thin them out when the clumps get too thick, and I totally get that. If you're using it for a privacy screen, you know, you probably just leave it alone. As I mentioned before, they are self-cleaning, but once they're brown all the way to the base, you can just reach in and these will pop right off. But you don't want to pull them too soon. If there's any sign of green in there, then do not pull it out because you end up leaving a scar, a scar along <laughs> the scar, and that's permanent. It never goes away. So I like to make sure they are ready to go completely. But I also really enjoy pulling these off, so I have had my moments with uh, some of my other palm trees where I pull them a little bit prematurely, because it's kind of fun to do. Now, if you want to go ahead and get one of these and grow it indoors, I have a few suggestions. One of my first suggestions would be using a cactus and a palm potting mix, something that drains very well. You can add things to it. I usually add some orchid bark to mine not an orchid bark that has any type of moss in it because that retains moisture and we want this to drain freely. It just helps kind of get that soil to move a little bit better. Perlite pumice also works well for this. I also like to make sure that the leaves stay very clean. Indoors, things get dusty. So I'll take my spray bottle here. This just has a few drops of Dawn in it, just some dish soap, and I will give them a spray occasionally, maybe once a month, if even and then I'll go in and wipe that off. Now, normally I would have my hand under there, but my hand's holding my camera right now. And then I take a rag and I just give it a pull. And wipe that soap off. Sometimes I leave it on for just a minute because the soap also helps kill soft-bodied insects like aphids. So it has that deterrent factor in there. And 
soapy water also helps retain some moisture as well. So, but basically you want to get the dust off of your leaves because you want the chlorophyll to have its full access to sunlight. The plant will just do a lot better if the chlorophyll, if the leaves are not blocked from light. So keeping the dust off is important. And really it adds a very mild gloss to the leaves that I think looks really nice too. Next bit of advice, if you're growing these indoors, would be to make sure that they are raised up above their drainage dish so that they don't end up sitting in the water that drains down there. If I haven't reiterated this enough, these do not like to sit in water, but they do like to be watered. So don't let them get wet feet. Speaking of that, when you pot these up, it's not a bad idea to put a layer of, I usually use packing peanuts, sort of grind them up in my fingers and drop them in the bottom of the pot just so that I don't have to worry about the hole getting clogged up. I don't typically put anything on the bottoms of my pots to help with drainage. It usually is fine, but with plants that I know do not like wet feet, that's what I will normally do. And then adding large tips of charcoal or activated carbon helps to reduce risks of rot and foul water should water collect down there. Mixing that into your soil is also pretty nifty too. These two particular Rika palms I've had for a few years, and I would say they have probably doubled in height. They've grown fairly fast for me, especially considering they're in pots and they spend their winters indoors in what has up until this year been a very mild climate but things are warmer this year so what i'm getting at there is they're a moderately uh, i'd say a moderate to medium speed grower as far as palms are concerned maybe six to eight six to seven inches of growth a year might be normal oh and i do not want to forget to tell you black speckling along the crown shaft totally normal don't worry about it it's supposed to be there. It's not a fungus. That is a totally normal characteristic of the Eureka Palm, and I think it's really pretty. Okay, I could go on and on and on about these, but really, I'd like to go ahead and cut this off now because in this probably early summer, late spring, I'll be doing a follow-up where you, I can actually show these outdoors, and you can see them in their full glory and talk about fertilizing and upkeep and things like that. So, that's going to do it for today. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to comment down below. I love talking to y'all. I'll, I'll put all my social medias down in the description below. Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't forget to leave that thumbs up. It helps the videos a lot, and I really appreciate it. Tell me your experiences with Eureka Palms or other clustering palms, just your favorite palms. Let's just nerd out and talk about plants. How about that? Okay, all right. And as always, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.